asthma treatment is the topic for this video. And uh, before we get into the treatment, very briefly want to talk a little bit about uh, asthma. What exactly is it? Well, there's inflammation uh, involved in the airway and there's also a component of bronchoconstriction. So those are the two fundamental components. And then a patient pr presents of course with difficulty breathing, wheezing is commonly heard, patient can also have cough. Diagnosis is done by doing these tests known as pulmonary function tests which are very important and they basically measure all kinds of uh, lung volumes, total lung capacity, residual volume, uh, tidal volume, forced uh, vital capacity, forced expiratory volume, peak expiratory flow, etc. So a lot of great diagnostic uh, information. So now I'll talk briefly about the medications that are involved and then I'll give you a step-by-step -step instructions that, as to how to treat asthma. The main players are bronchodilators for obvious reasons since the pathophysiology of asthma includes bronchoconstriction you want to give a medications that will help dilate and they're known as beta 2 agonists and there's short acting beta 2 agonists and of course long acting now there's uh, some acronyms that they use. Short acting beta 2 agonists are sometimes referred to as SABA, and long acting beta 2 agonists are referred to as LABA or LABA. And um, examples of each of these short acting, by far the most common is albuterol, which is obviously uh, given um, short term as an inhaler, and it works up to four hours. And then long acting works up to 12 hours, and the most famous one is salmeterol. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, and that's also given as an inhaler. So bronchodilators, big component. Now we'll get to the next one, which is corticosteroids. And corticosteroids are used in the treatment of asthma because they decrease inflammation. And remember, that was one of the two big components of asthma. And uh, by far, the uh, most common uh, types of steroids include fluticasone, which is given as an inhaler. And then if you're going to give oral steroids, then prednisone is often used. And then the third type of asthma medication I wanted to uh, discuss briefly is leukotriene uh, modulators. And these are used sometimes to help uh, augment the therapy. And the most common used in US and Canada is Monte Lucast, and it's given as a pill. So it's given PO. So now what I'll do is I'm going to try my best to uh, give you the actual guidelines that are used to treat asthma. So. got to create these categories here and I'm going to need a little bit of space for each of these so here we go well on the top basically are the steps what step of asthma does the person have and next is the symptoms next is the nighttime symptoms nocturnal symptoms uh, the next is the lung function Next category is now we will talk about treatment in this column. So we have long term and then you have quick relief. All right, so let's get started. So there's four categories, so we're going to need four boxes. So we have step one, which is known as mild intermittent. And mild intermittent essentially means symptoms less than twice a week. And 
Nighttime sy symptoms less than twice a month, not very common. The lung function, which is measured uh, as either the FEV1 or peak flow, is going to be pretty good, greater than 80%. And uh, I'm going to talk about the, the treatments after I finish these columns. Step two is known as mild persistent. And the symptoms are greater than twice a week. Nighttime symptoms are greater than twice per month. Lung function is also greater than 80%. So as you can see, this is just somebody who's progressed a little bit more than a few symptoms uh, um, a week, like one or, or none. Now they're getting, you know, three or four or five symptoms per week. Third is the moderate category, moderate persistent. And moderate persistent is daily, daily symptoms. And probably about one symptom per week at night. And this is where the peak flow goes down a bit to 60 to 80 percent. And then the fourth and final category is known as severe for obvious reasons. Severe or severe persistent and this is continuous symptoms continual symptoms and frequent nighttime symptoms and the peak flow or FEV1 is less than 60 alright so now let's talk about the symptoms well the good news is that for quick relief it's the same all the way down the board and you're going to be using a SABA short-acting beta agonist which most commonly is albuterol so that's the good news, that, that albuterol inhaler, INH, albuterol inhaler, is used as quick relief for all the steps. So now let's talk about this category, which is a very important category to remember, the long-term treatment of the steps. The first category, step one, none. The person just uses their albuterol inhaler as needed. Symptoms are only less than twice a week so not that many times now we get into category two this category is where you need to start with the inhaled corticosteroid so this person is no longer just able to get by on their albuterol inhaler they need a corticosteroid an example of that is fluticasone now each country has their own brand name in US and Canada it's called Flovent and uh, different countries have different brand names. Now one other medication I wanted to talk about in step two is some physicians also in addition add a leukotriene modulator leukotriene medication and that's to help uh, a patient if fluticasone it, by itself is not enough. So the fluticasone inhaler is first given and you assess if they also need a leukotriene inhibitor or a leukotriene modulator sorry as a augmentation and it's usually given as a PO it's a pill and the most common one is Montelukast now we get into this category and this category is special because this is a very very big medication and that medication is a combination of a steroid plus a LABA, long-acting beta agonist. And the steroid is fluticasone. And the long-acting beta agonist is salmeterol. And this is given as a combination. It's an inhaler. And there's different brand names. In US and Canada, it's called Advair. In other parts of the world, it's known as Ceratide. but very important medication. So that's for category three. Category four, the final one, you continue with this uh, steroid plus long-acting beta agonist inhaler. So if you're in US and Canada, continue with the Advair, but you also need to start with oral steroids. So oral prednisone. 
So please remember this. This is by far the holy grail of the uh, asthma treatment uh, guidelines. And it's actually not that bad. It's not that difficult to remember. So let's uh, take a look at some clinical vignettes and see how we can use this um, table or guidelines. For each patient with asthma, select the most appropriate therapy for asthma management in adults and children over the age of five. Okay, so they've given us some categories here, A, B, C, and D, and then we have to take a look at these questions. Let's take a look at the first one. 21-year-old female college student complains of occasional brief episodes of shortness of breath, wheezing, and cough. These episodes occur twice a month on average, never more than once a week. Office pulmonary function tests are within normal limits. Well, twice a month, never more than once a week. Well, she's most likely in category one, so you just need to give her albuterol inhaler, short-acting beta agonist. So that would be, in the choices, it would be choice A, symptomatic use of albuterol by meter dose inhaler. Let's talk about the next one. Next one, an 18-year-old woman with history of severe eczema complains of continued wheezing, shortness of breath, and cough. Her symptoms are continuous in nature. During the past two weeks, she has visited the emergency department with these complaints three times. Last year, she was admitted to the hospital on four occasions with severe shortness of breath and wheezing. She has never been intubated. Office pulmonary function testing reveals a peak flow that is 40% of predicted. Well, the continuous and the 40% really stood out for me, and that reminded me of step Four. So she's got continuous and she's definitely got less than 60%. So she needs the steroid and long acting beta agonist combination. And she also will probably need to be started on oral steroids. So prednisone pills. And which of those is that? Uh, right here daily inhaled fluticasone, daily inhaled salimeterol. These two are given as a combination in one inhaler and oral prednisone and symptomatic use of albuterol. Well, that's for every step. So for question number two, the correct answer would be D. And for question number one, the correct answer was A. Let's go to number three. A 25 year old man is referred to secondary to worsening complaints of wheezing and dyspnea. He says that he has symptoms every day despite using albuterol seven to 10 times per day. He reports that perhaps once a week, the symptoms become so severe that he has to limit his activity. Office pulmonary function testing reveals a peak flow that is 65. Well, every day in 65 would put you in category three, right here. And he, if he's in category three, that he needs to have the steroid and long-acting beta agonist as an inhaler. And that would be among the choices Choice C. So daily inhaled fluticasone, daily inhaled salmuterol, and those two medications are given in one inhaler to make uh, compliance easier. So question number three answers C. And then the final one, a 30-year-old man complains of episodic wheezing and dyspnea, which occur three to four times per week. They rarely force him to live in a, limit his activity. Once a month, perhaps, he suffers from nighttime wheezing. Office pulmonary function testing reveals a peak flow that is 90% of predicted. So symptoms three to four times a week, a very good peak flow. He is in category two. And he just needs to continue with his albuterol inhaler. And he needs to be given, in addition to that, an inhaled corticosteroid, so a fluticasone inhaler. So that would be daily inhaled fluticasone and symptomatic use of albuterol by meter dose inhaler. So the answer to number four is B. And then I have one final question. A 22 year old man with history of asthma controlled with albuterol meter dose inhaler alone complains of worsening symptoms of shortness of breath. Over the past 10 years he rarely needed his rescue inhaler more than twice a month. However over the past four months he reports requiring rescue inhaler treatment four to five times per week. 
A canister of albuterol, which used to last two to three months, is now being replaced every three weeks. He denies any other symptoms. Most appropriate pharmacotherapy is. Well, this was a patient that used to be in step one, and all he needed was his albuterol as a quick relief. Now he's progressed to step two. And when you progress to step two, what do you do? Well, you need to start giving some long-term treatment with an inhaled corticosteroid. So he needs to have some sort of inhaled corticosteroid added to his treatment uh, regimen. And let's see which one of the answer choices that is. And that would be fluticasone right here, meter dose inhaler. So the answer would be E.